I want to start with the new battery strategy and the switch to lithium ion phosphate. What does that mean to you? Yes, well, my colleague Sam Kors has done a lot of great work on batteries. Uh, we, we see that electric vehicle batteries are following a Wright's Law cost decline curve. Um, that means they're getting cheaper, which is going to help uh, Tesla improve margins. So what the lithium ion phosphite batteries mean is that uh, these, these will be even more inexpensive. Uh, they could potentially offer faster charging. Uh, but that's a big takeaway that these are, you know, it's the structural battery pack. It could be a little less expensive, which should ultimately help Tesla with margins. So talk to us about the supply chain pain. You know, obviously, this is something that every company is feeling. We have heard Elon Musk complain about that. Do you see it reflected in the numbers? So I think the thing to think about with Tesla and these supply chain issues is, yes, they're not immune to them, but um, they're better set up to be more adaptable and to deal with them than traditional automakers. Um, particularly if you think about the chip shortage, uh, Tesla has uh, both the hardware and software talent in-house uh, that it needs to, uh, to switch suppliers, to write the firmware um, for those new chips. Um, and so that's, that's not something that every automaker can do. Uh, so so that, that's just going to, to help them with this challenge. Although again, they're not going to be immune um, but I think longer term, um, what do we see? Well, uh, with the chip shortage that we're seeing, uh, there could be a potential glut in the future as companies uh, try to build inventories of, of chips they think they need, particularly uh, for the traditional automakers. You know, we see e electric vehicles as a percent of global sales only increasing. So um, the amount of vehicles that a traditional automaker may expect to, uh, you know, bounce back from today's levels, if they're producing gas-powered cars, uh, might actually be lower than they're expecting uh, when they're making okay. these orders. So I think that's something to look this, out for. What does this all mean for deliveries in the U.S., China, and beyond? Well, we already got delivery numbers for the quarter. Um, you know, they were uh, better than expectations, helped helped by China. Um, we know that that's becoming uh, Tesla's biggest exporter. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's its, it's largest plant. Um, so. I think, uh, you know, deliveries, I would say in general, um, they're short term. I, I think longer term, we're, we're looking at the big picture with electric vehicles. We think there'll be 40 million EVs sold uh, by 2025. Um, electric vehicles are the way forward. And Tesla's really the leader in this market. And, you know, I didn't even mention autonomous technology, uh, which is another area that we think uh, Tesla is, is really pulling ahead of peers here. So, um, we're signing a 50% probability to them successfully creating a fully autonomous car in the next five years, and they can launch a robo-taxi network. We think it'll be very profitable. It'll totally change the business model.